Good morning. Okay, so last night we left off with our cups that we had sanded and primed. So as you can tell, these are all nice and dry this morning. Um, I just kind of brush them off to make sure there's no lint on them. So, and then I had a couple people ask me how hard these mats were to clean. So I let the paint dry on these mats. Here, let me change where you can see what I'm doing. So I let the paint dry on the mats. See, you can see here it's dry. Um, and then I just get a piece of box tape and peel it right off. Then you just grab that right there on there. Off it comes. Easiest way to clean these. I used to take them to the sink and scrub them off and rinse them and everything else and that takes so much longer. So there. And then all of your paint is stuck to this tape. Get rid of it. Done. Bye. Um, so what we're going to do today is epoxy, put the first layer of epoxy on these. Um, few things you're going to need. Of course, you will need your two-part resin. So I have resin and my hardener labeled two separate little squeeze bottles. Um, I like to use these measuring cups. I just get them in like a pack of 200 off of Amazon. You can, if you watch them, you can get them pretty cheap. Um, but a pack of those will last me forever. I'm going to show you a trick today. Do not throw these away when you're done. It took me forever to learn that. But what I do is I leave my little popsicle stick stuck in the bottom of them. You kind of, you let these dry overnight. You just kind of roll this around to loosen that resin up once it's set in there. Grab your little popsicle stick and gently wiggle back and forth. So what happens if you pull this too fast, sometimes this popsicle will disconnect from out here and it makes it just a little bit harder to pull this out. But if you very gently rock this back and forth and ta-da, so you can even see it's like the shape of the inside of the medicine cup. So and then you just throw this away and then you have a cup that's nice and clean and ready to be reused. Um, if you have little pieces in here which we don't this time. You can just use um, masking tape or scotch tape to clean out the inside of this to get those extra pieces off. Um, but yeah, I think I have a little bit stuck. Oh yeah, see, a little stuck to the rim right there. Not the end of the world because that's not going to affect how we measure. Um, let me just throw that away. And you've got a nice clean cup ready to be reused again. So, save you some money on those. And then... Another trick that I've learned the hard way, popsicle sticks, if you put them in these big, these little bitty cups, they fall right over. But if you cut the same popsicle stick in half, number one, you're going to get twice the bang for your buck. You get two, pop two stir sticks out of one. But look, we've now solved our falling over problem. Um... And I just used a pair of cutters to do that. Nothing fancy. Um, any crafter I've ever met has a pair of those wire cutters somewhere in their studio, in their workspace, whatever. Now, my next very important piece of equipment is my cup turner. Um, I happen to get these from Little Lee and Rose. They are one of my very, very favorite vendors to get things like my glitter and molds and things like that from. Um, she is, the owner of the company is just as sweet as can be and she's taught a lot, taught me a lot of what I know and it really helped me kind of grow in my knowledge base and things like that. So this little foam thing yeah it seems like it's going to be too big for the cup but it helps stabilize it a lot so you're just going to kind of scrunch that in there um so the important thing to, to know on these cups is this part is always bigger than this part you want to if you try to level this 
side of the cup, you're always going to end up with your resin kind of going one way or the other. Um, level using the bottom of your cup. If this is straight up and down, nice and level, you'll be golden. So, next part is I always kind of measure my resin at eye level. So I'm going to set this up here on top of here because that's eye level for me. Um, and I like to use, so these, I, these measure in like mils and cc's and drams. Um, whatever you're comfortable using, just make sure that it has markings that you can measure in equal parts. So for these cups, I'm going to do, um, I'm going to measure 20 mils total weight or total volume. So I want 10 mils of each. So I'm going to make sure that there's a 10 and a 20. Perfect. We're good to go. And it doesn't matter really what order you mix, you put your resin in the cups. I always do resin first and then the hardener. Sorry, you just got to get this just right because if you don't get the right amounts of each product you end up with cups that never dry they always stay kind of tacky and that's the last thing you want so now I've got my 20 mils of two-part epoxy in here now I'm just going to mix. Um, so as you start to mix your epoxy, you'll notice it does this weird, like, I don't know how well you can see it, it kind of gets like cloudy and streaky looking. Um, so as you mix that, that will start to clear up. And your you'll know your epoxy is well mixed by the fact that it will turn completely clear. Um, try to mix kind of slowly to avoid bubbles as much as you can. That will help you immensely when applying the epoxy to your tumblers. So I just mix, mix, mix. Um, you want to kind of take your time when you're stirring. It'll help keep it from getting too many bubbles in it. Um, and this is kind of one of those things that I have learned over time. Because one of the very first videos I ever watched about how to mix epoxy and how to do all that. The lady said that you should stir this vigorously to help speed up a heat reaction. Um, so working with epoxy, a heat reaction is the last thing you want because if you speed up the heat reaction time, epoxy cures by creating heat. And I found out the hard way my first couple rounds of epoxy that when you speed up this reaction and you create this extra heat, then you can create some very big problems for your your completed masterpieces. So, and this was something I definitely did not want to do. Um, let me grab one more thing. I forgot to grab something. Um, the other thing you're going to want in this process is a silicone brush. I got these on Amazon, a pack of like 25 of them for like five or six bucks. And this is just to help facilitate the spreading out of the resin. The cool thing is, is when these are done, this is another thing you just let the resin dry on here and just peel it off. Um, so we're just going to turn this turner on. Make sure there's... No dusties or anything that we don't want in our cup. Make sure your cup's nice and level all the way around. And 
I just kind of drizzle this on here. There's no right or wrong way to do this. Um, put that on there, kind of spread it around. You're going to make sure that you cover the whole surface um, with a pretty even coat. It didn't have to be perfectly even because the wonderful thing about resin is to some degree it does self-level. So it will, that's why it's important to kind of let it turn. That helps to perpetuate that process. I think that's the right word. It's early, I haven't had a lot of coffee, so if I use the wrong word, please forgive me. Um, yeah, so, you just kind of spread this around, get a nice even coat on here, and this first coat is really just to kind of like seal the paint in. So that you don't mess it up when you're putting on your decals later. And which last night after I did the video with you guys on how to prep and prime your cups, I went ahead and cut the decals for these cups. So I'll, um, so those are already ready for our next step. Which we will not do in today's video. Sorry, guys. Because, um, Foxy ideally needs to cure for about, mm, I usually let mine cure for at least seven to eight hours before I do anything else with it. Um, now, I will say for these tumblers, if you're going to be shipping them, you're going to want to let the epoxy clear, uh, cure for at least two to three days before you ship them because it's a, Epoxy you just it takes a long time to hard cure. So like the first couple of days after it's fine to use it, it's fine to handle it. But just for shipping purposes to be extra safe and to um make sure your work doesn't get messed up. You really just want to give that the extra time to hard set. Um Um, but yeah, like I said, this first coat, this is really just to get the resin on here. This is just to get it kind of going. You just want to kind of make sure all the surfaces are covered. And like I said, resin's very self-leveling, so if you get too much in one spot, it's fine. Just spread it out. That way it levels itself and gets where it needs to go. Pay special close attention to your rims of your cap so that you get enough because it will tend to migrate this way sometimes. So I always redirect it back up to the top. If I ever... your brush off. Okay, now for the reason I wear gloves, I am very OCD about this process, and sometimes those um, brushes leave little divots kind of in the top coat of the epoxy, and so I just make sure I get them all. smooth out the way you want them. Now I throw up in there. And then because I am gonna do a couple more of these cups, 
I try not to waste my gloves because they are a huge commodity right now. I went to the store yesterday and I was like, well, if they're not, if they're cheap, I'll pick up another box just so I have them. And then I saw they were still like $18 a package. And I was like, no, 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 no. We'll, we'll just keep salvaging. So what just happened there was I saw a spot that we had missed with the resin. So I just went ahead and hit it um, with a little bit more just to make sure we get a nice good even coat. So it seems like we've got everything pretty well covered. So now this is going to be a cool kind of, try to get you up close enough that you can see what's going to happen here. So this is just a torch that I get at, I got this one at Home Depot I guess. Um, you can get them at Harbor Freight for just like a cheap fix, just a butane torch that you fill. Um, you never actually let it touch the surface of the cup. Just kind of drift it back and forth, just right above it. Um, I don't know how well this is going to show up on video, but epoxy has like micro bubbles in it. Just that it happen in the normal chemical reaction of mixing the two components. So, this is the best way I found to get rid of all that micro bubbling. Um, and especially when we're doing flat, a, a base, just a solid color on this cap, there's not a lot to look at to distract you from the fact that this cup has a flaw here or there. So you want to make sure that you get it as full of this looking as you can because I promise you, a cup like this, flaws such as bubbly resin and stuff will show quicker than anything. Which I thought about it before um, I did this cup. On the next cup, I'll show you a little trick I do just to get this color just a little deeper. So, alright. That cup is ready to set to the side. So, give me just a minute. I'm going to switch out my cup turners, grab us another one, and we'll be ready to go. Just a second. Cup turner. Ah. And yes, I have three of these mo of this particular model. Um, so we are ready to roll again. Let me get us repositioned here. Perfect. And just like before, we'll just pop that on there. Level it just like so. Beautiful. Turn that on. Let me find my black paint real quick. black paint. There you are. So this is just the same paint that we used to base coat with last night. I will take, ooh, that's no good. I will. Um, and what I'll do is I'll just take like the other half of that popsicle stick is fine. And I'll just, just like this much, just not very much at all on this popsicle stick. Um, that dry and I'll be able to use that. And then I just mix this in here and turn my epoxy black. Now here's the thing I will tell you, be careful doing this. 
If you're going to take your epoxy using paint, that's fine. I do it all the time. I've seen people who say, oh, don't ever put a clear acrylic paint in your epoxy. You'll ruin it. No, not true. You won't ruin it. You will ruin it if you put too much. Um, because acrylic paint has a water base and yeah, there's a whole thing with the chemical reaction. That's a lot, but yeah, no, you're not going to ruin it by putting any acrylic paint. You'll ruin it by putting too much. Um, yeah, let me grab my bag over here real quick. I get this epoxy off my arm before I ruin something. Okay, cool. Now we're in better shape. Okay, so now, same process as before. We're just going to do it with black epoxy instead of clear epoxy. And you know, sometimes I won't even mess with the brush. And as I go straight for the f using my finger, um, it's just kind of whatever mood I'm in that day. And sometimes I kind of bounce back and forth between what I use. You'll find what tools work for you. You'll find what tools you just can't make work. Um, yeah. There are, believe it or not, I have seen people who can make a whole cup and never use gloves or anything. And I have yet to figure out that art. I, yeah. I am very much a hands-on sort of person. I like to have my hands on whatever I'm working on. And so, I end up with like hands that are stained in alcohol ink or glitter or glue or spray paint. My husband always tells me, wear gloves. I wear gloves. Just, they don't always do what I need them to do. And once again, we're just making sure this is all covered and sealed and hidden and everything's done like it should be. So all the um, black tint does for the epoxy is just kind of deepen the color, keeps it from showing flaws as easy, um, things like that. So and just like I said, we're done with this epoxy. There's a little bit left in there, but I'm gonna leave it to set like this, and that way I can reuse my cup. Um, We'll still use the same process as before, where I will torch this. So, torch all those little micro bubbles out of there. And like I said, flame never actually touches the cup. It just kind of hovers somewhere above it. And all it is is it creates a heat exchange so we can pull those bubbles to the surface of the cup so that they don't get trapped underneath. Get all this 
Lanka Mills out. Cool. And then and you end up with this beautiful sleek black cup. Um, once this resin sets, then we will do another video on how to um, apply the decals. I have more cool tools for that, so, um, but yeah, so that is the process to applying epoxy, and um, as always, any questions, drop them down in the comments, give me a like, give me a subscribe, and hopefully we can keep these videos coming, because this is actually a lot of fun, it helps me remember with steps and the processes that didn't, didn't work for me, um, and all it took to get me to the point where I could do things like this, like show you guys how this works and what tools and things like that. So, um, have a great day and I'll see you next time. Bye.